In today's video, I want to talk about a lens that I recently picked up. The Fujinon NW 135F 5.6. Let's get into what I like about it. There it is right there. So cute and little. That rear element as well, just adorable. So little, cute and compact, super lightweight. And that's the big reason why I wanted this lens was because it was going to give me the ability to not only have a lighter setup, but a more compact setup, something that I could pack away in my four by five without having to always take the lens off put it in my bag and then, you know, carry around the four by five. This was just going to help me walk around a little bit more on these, you know, long hikes that I've been going on recently uh, and carrying typically this big son of a bitch, the 90 millimeter, as you can see, they are just worlds apart in terms of their size. And uh, maybe if I can show you properly here or like, you know, real properly, those rear elements, like they're just, completely different. This one's huge, it's heavy, it weighs about four pounds, close to four pounds. This one weighs about a pound and a half. So really, really, really lightweight and compact and that's a huge selling point for me to get out and uh, not have the hindrance of having a really large lens to carry around. The colors are absolutely gorgeous, but obviously we're shooting on um, black and white so it doesn't really matter too much, but these treads with the, uh, with all the, the frozen uh, pieces of uh, water that are kind of intertwined here. And obviously the tire treads that are frozen, the grass that's frozen, and you get some beautiful fog coming up over the, uh, over the barns there. It looks pretty gnarly. Though, I gotta admit, is that better? I couldn't quite see that, uh, that silo over there, so I'm not sure if that's gonna work out too well. For a shot in the can. I really like this image quite a bit, but there were some parts of it that I was kind of baffled by. And that was really just how soft the image felt. And I was curious as to why this image felt soft. In fact, the second image I took that day of this, I, I thought it was an eye rock, but I, I, I don't think it is. I'm not, I still can't really make out because the image, it really isn't super sharp. But what I realized was transitioning from my warm car to an extremely blistery cold day of like 15 degrees, um, there was some fogging on, on the lens and on the rear element, most importantly, and I wasn't really aware of it. So these images are crazy soft, way softer than you would expect out of four by five. And, uh, when I got home, I was really just, I was pretty frustrated. I was like, this is not the lens that I was hoping for. Uh, it wasn't until I went out the following morning with some Ektar 100 and shot this image of a Tesla at a rest stop that I was like, yeah, okay. I get it now. Subject matter, uh, not terrible, right? Like the image is what it is. I thought it was interesting. We had a crazy ice storm the night before. And when you look into the details of this image, you can see very crisply and cleanly all of this like icicles and, and wet, you know, all the condensation on these uh, Tesla charging stations are all kind of covered in a little bit of ice and everything is just icy and it was treacherous to drive out there, but everything looked really, really cool. And it just goes to show how sharp this lens can truly be. And uh, when I got out of my car, 
to avoid the fogging, uh, I just kind of, I took my lens off and I just kind of stood outside my car for a little while in the freezing cold and just let everything acclimate. And uh, that made a huge difference. This is a much better image, really, really, really sharp. And uh, yeah, this was the one that made me go, oh, oh shit, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. What an awesome start to the morning, holy cow. Though not all the images I took on black and white were bad, I used Cat Labs X82, which I generally like. Uh, the film has been sitting in film holders since November. I had opened the box in February of 2022. So like, no, not February 2020, no, May 2022. So like this film has been kind of sitting around. So I, w I wasn't expecting a whole lot, but this image of a barn that I took, um, really wasn't too bad. I used a decent amount of rise on here, a little bit of shift. Uh, I mean, a little bit of uh, swing to get it nicely in focus. Uh, and stopped all the way down to F32 to make sure that it was nailed. Every single part of it. it was backlit. I didn't want to overexpose it or underexpose it. I shot it right for the middle of the uh, or the midtones. And uh, I got to say, I'm pretty happy with this image. I let the lens sit out for a while. I was just kind of, I let I set up the camera and I just kind of like wandered around looking for compositions, and that was enough to remove that fogging from a warm car to the cold temperatures outside, but that was, that was fun. Um, but I do want to talk about one thing, um, and that is the differentiating factors of the Fujinon W and NW. See, this is the NW. Even though it signifies right over here that it's just the W. That's not accurate. The W is the single-coated older version. The NW is the multi-coated more modern version. There is one major differentiator visibly that you can make from these two lenses. And one is that the NW has a 52 millimeter filter thread and the W has a 46 millimeter filter thread. Um, but I, I like this, I, I like the 135 sort of like focal length because it is a little bit more in tuned with what I see in, in photography. Uh, typically I shoot with a 35 millimeter lens on my OM4. I shoot with the 6.9, which is a 65 millimeter lens, which is closer to like 28 millimeters on a 35 millimeter sensor. And this lens, it's a little bit closer to 40 millimeters. So like it's, it's roughly there. I have a 210 millimeter rodent stock that's closer to like 65 millimeters. I don't feel comfortable with that focal length. I never have. I don't like that lens as much, even though it's a fantastic lens. Um, but I needed something as a good in-between from 210 to 90, 135 is the best option for me. Uh, and this is sort of the reason why I wanted to make this video was to um, hopefully help some people that are getting into large format or are already shooting large format and they went out and bought a lens that they maybe don't like as much. This lens is darn good. There are a lot of other 135 millimeter lenses. There's one that's much better in the Roden stock, much sharper, but this is a cheaper alternative. There's a Nikkor 135 F5.6. That's also very, very good. Uh, and they're very, very sharp lenses. They're fairly inexpensive and they're really lightweight and compact. So if you're getting into large format and you just don't know where to go, 
you're sort of lost in like the sea of information that is lens hunting for large format. Um, I, I would say try to, you know, find something that's 135 millimeters because it's going to give you a little bit of space to play while also being able to shoot portraits and also being able to do studio work and all this sort of stuff. It's a really great general purpose all around lens. And that's why I think this lens is absolutely incredible and might be the best lens that I own. I think that's all I want to talk about. Yeah, that's all I can talk about. I gotta go to work. <laughs>